Joining us today is baseball senior Dante Moran. He's going to talk a little about the season with us today. Um, and uh, I know that we, we talked a little before we were recording here about uh, the size of your team increasing, you know, uh, since you last really had a full season two years ago. Um, Coach Jim Neidlinger is in his second year. What have you seen sort of in the growth of the program just since your sophomore year? Um, probably since my sophomore year, we had probably the lowest roster size we had. I think we had 22 guys and I was like on a good day. That's it. Everyone traveled. No one was hurt. No one had anything they had to miss the games for. Um, so just like, just in size alone and the amount of people we have, it just really pushes people to compete. Like no one's really getting complacent. Um, even if some of the guys are like significantly, you know, just getting comfortable and they can't really push themselves, just having someone behind them, just sharing reps or just seeing that there's another body that potentially can fill your spot is going to help people compete. I think that alone has made people a lot better this year. I imagine that's also a little better, like for just the mental stress of, geez, you know, I, my arm has been feeling awful for a week, but you know, you, you play third base. I need to be out there. I mean, have you guys been able to also sort of do that during practices where, yeah, somebody's not feeling great. You can still do infield outfield though with, a lot of the younger players you have exactly yeah some of the guys like you know it's hard because our fall season even got short and then coming back in over you know over the winter break there's not a lot of people that can go out and do stuff outside i'm fortunate enough for where it was warm where when i go home i'm good to go outside i can do stuff um, but a lot of the guys up north are stuck with either inside or kind of just doing what they can to maintain where they're at um, but it's hard to come back in and also like have a whole month cut off of your preseason so a lot of guys come in with like arm problems right away and having a like a bigger roster size we can kind of tell them to shut it down for a little bit you know just get the reps without throwing um i mean that's just really all they need to work on until their arm gets better and be able to have people that can still throw and not necessarily like only rely on that one person everyone can still get reps everyone can fill in even if you are hurt you can still kind of practice no one's really just sitting out completely which is good this of course is the perfect time to point out that you're from Tampa, Florida. So, you know, a little warmer back home. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know that you guys, you and men's across sort of had the rare, uh, not rare, unique opportunity to actually play some games before everything was shut down last year. Um, Those one double header down to Massachusetts against Bowdoin. Um, what, uh, I guess, as you, look at that team you have a lot of guys coming back and then you have also i believe a dozen 13 or so first years added to that group what have you seen just in the last year or so from those younger players that uh you know hopefully hopefully makes you a little excited about going into your senior year yeah uh so there's a lot of good things about kind of looking at that one game and kind of in terms of that season yeah it sucked that we weren't able to have a full season looking at the good things there was me specifically I was hurt so I really didn't even play I, you know I, I had a few at bats and I was really I was just just coming off surgery um and then a lot of the young guys actually had to start and they played all both games in the double header um and having those two games be their two college games for their first ones they kind of get the freshman jitters out um and then they're able to come back and realize like all right this is where I need to improve yeah it was the first game but they get a true kind of like judge of where they're at at the like the college level compared to high school so like sophomore year, when they come in, there's a big thing called the sophomore slump. Everyone goes through it, <laughs> but they technically didn't have a season. So they're probably not going to experience that because whether they did good or bad their freshman year, they only had one day to judge that and be able to practice just the, like the growth of confidence and as well as skill level. You can just see the difference between some of the people that get out there the first game last year and they just, they weren't able to compete as fully as they wanted to because they're a little jittery. It's a good way to good way to think about it, though. You're right. I mean, I think I I sort of discussed that with some of the softball players when we were talking about their season that they have almost their entire team sophomores and first years. They they're basically just all rookies still, even as sophomores. Um, so you have that. You have you have more depth. But as you have you as a part of a five man senior class, first off seeing what happened with the fall and winter sports, knowing that we were trying to do everything we could to provide 
a regular season for them and that just didn't work out. Knowing that you will still have the opportunity to play a spring season, I mean, was that something that it was almost a relief when you found out, yes, here's a schedule we're going to play. And for you five, um, knowing that you will have an opportunity to play in your senior year, you know, is that also a relief and something that you could say, okay, close this chapter on my life as a college baseball player? Yeah, for sure. I feel like, well, there's a few things. One, it's just like us having to wake up at 5 a.m. for practice three, four times a week. Um, and then not knowing if we have a season was tough. So like you're waking up, you're doing all this. And then we played a doubleheader last year and then it got canceled. So we, we spent two months waking up 5 a.m. three, four times a week to get it pulled from us. And yeah, it sucked. Um, and then coming in after winter break this year, we're still have a few 5 a.m. practices a week this this year. And, you know, without knowing if we truly had a season yet, it, it was pretty hard. A lot of people were doubtful. And then as soon as we got the news, like, hey, we're having a season the schedule got released, you're going to see, like, the morale of the team kind of get uplifted. You know, people were complaining about waking up at 5 a.m., getting over to practice, stuff like that. And now people, they're up. You know, they're making the practice 10 minutes earlier, you know, just to stretch and get going. They're not moseying in at 530. You know, they're there at 515. You're going to see that, like, just the will to be there and the want to actually practice and the want to get better. It just is a lot more. So which ultimately this is good. And we're fortunate enough because, you know, we've been practicing a lot more and we've been practicing a lot longer than some of the other schools in the NE10. I know some of the other schools just started practicing like the first week of March. And we've been up here all of February, started about halfway through February. So we've had the, like two week advantage. As a senior, what uh, have you taken on in terms of trying to be a leader again for, geez, 12, 13 first years, you have, I think, five sophomores and something like five, even five juniors who've never gone through a full season of college baseball yet. What kind of role have you taken on as a leader? Yeah, uh, I'm a big believer in kind of lead by example. I'm not one that's going to get on someone, you know, if they're not doing their job and stuff like that. I feel like that's a coach's job. Um, you know, if, if they want to be there, they're going to be there. If they don't want to be there, no matter who's telling them not to, you know, it's just going to show. Uh, I don't know. I guess when, like, if I think of like my role as a leader, my role as leadership in general, I kind of, I kind of focus on leading by example, you know, just doing the right things, you know, doing what's, what you're asked. And, you know, if you don't perform the way you are kind of keeping your head, keeping everything that you're supposed to do still going and not kind of showing emotion. I kind of have like a very, I guess you can say like monotone or something like that kind of just expression. Like I'm not going to be overly excited if I do something well, and I'm not going to, if I'm doing bad, I'm not going to show that, you know, I'm getting so frustrated where I don't even want to play anymore. You're just going to kind of lead by example. So you can show, especially some of these guys that are coming from high school. Some of the guys are not experienced a true like college, even our sophomores a true college season, stuff like that. Our season is so roughly short compared to like bigger schools or just schools that, you know, they start in January down South. So that's like halfway through January and they finish at the same time. They play about 60 games. So if they go through it like a weekend or two slump, they're still hitting 300. And our, in our season, the any 10, it's hard. Cause if you, if you go hitless in like one and a half series, you're batting under 300, no matter what. And you can still have a hit every single game, except one season. I mean, one uh, series and you're under 300. So it's like just, not being statistic based and actually just knowing who you are as a player and kind of what your role is on the team is kind of what I try to express to a lot of the kids. A question particularly about you. You're among half a dozen guys from Florida on the team. Um, I am sort of curious how you ended up at St. Mike's, but also just the fact that you've, you've almost made it through four full Vermont winters, Dante. I mean, that's, that's an achievement in itself. You know, how did you end up up here? Um, well, firstly, it's just recruiting from our from our coach our freshman year. Um, he got a lot of guys up here. He got probably more than half our team was from Florida our, our freshman year, um, as well as just from all over. You have Alex is from Nevada. Um, Julian's from Montreal, stuff like that. No one's really from, like we have some guys from New England, but majority of the people were outsourced. Um, I guess what really brought me here was just like experiencing something, something new. I grew up in Florida. 18 years so just kind of experiencing something else was like an interest to me um as well as just like the role of being able to come in and play as a freshman 
was really appealing. I, I didn't really have to, you know, sit out and kind of wait for my turn. I was able to hop right in. Um, that's just appealing to me personally. And I'm sure as a lot of the other guys, um, that's why a lot of the guys end up staying because, you know, they, they actually get a play. You know, they can actually say, hey, my four years I spent at college, I played four years. And, you know, you don't know what's going to happen after those four years. If you continue playing, if you don't. So if you have four years left, you don't want to spend them playing. You don't want to spend them watching. Yeah. Well, well, that's pretty much what I had for you today. You know, I appreciate you taking the time to talk. And, uh, yeah, it'll be good to get you guys out there. It'll be interesting seeing, you know, four-game weekend series against the same team. But you get to play. and Yeah, no complaint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for joining me today and, uh, yeah, good luck this season. Thank you.